Welcome to the Mojave Desert. This specific spot where so many lousy bands from the LA area have come to take their band photos. But in the distance over there, you could see Amboy Crater, all right? A basaltic pimple, a basaltic mound. It's about two or three miles up, but you could see these lava flows, all right? Very recent lava flows. Now in the summer, it gets upwards of 115 degrees here, only cooling down to maybe 85 at night, if that. But uh, right now, it's still dry as hell, but it's a nice, I don't know, it's like 65 degrees. Let's see what's going on down here. Look at the soil here. Look, it's like a, it's like a powdery, it's a powdery duff. Probably, probably nice to get stuck in when it, uh, when it rains. Lots of salt in the soil. Lots of members of the family Amaranthaceae. A lot of the Kenopodes, specifically the Kenopodes subfamily, Kenopodioidae. A lot of salt tolerant plants here. Get your atriplexes, your Allen Rolfias, these little succulent, form a little succulent colonies right there. Let's take a look at some of these goddamn leaves. Look at this. Like little glass beads. Like little glass anal beads right there on the, uh, on the rods. Why you always got to take it there? Do you have to make it nasty? I just want to make some of you uncomfortable. You know, I'm trying to filter out the squares. Anyway, look at that. Look like little, like, look, looks like those, uh, you know, ravers, uh, those uh, necklaces the candy ravers used to wear. Or it could be some sort of weird jewelry. You know, hard to tell if they're stems or leaves. You'd have to really get up in there. But I did put one in my mouth, and it was pretty, uh, it was pretty salty. It did not taste good. But obviously, salt tolerance is going to be an adaptive benefit in a place where the ground is so salty. And why is the ground so salty? Because you got all these racks from the surrounding mountains reacting with the rainwater. A little bit of minerals get dissolved, wash out into the uh, into the basins here. And then, of course, the water just evaporates and the salt accumulates, so you get these, these salty-ass soils. Neighbor kid's been smoking too much pat. They come out here, they're smoking pat, okay? All these online accounts are controlled by Russian bats, okay? Looking out at a satellite image, you just see a bunch of little spats, spats, like I'm about to have a myocardial infarction. He's gonna have a heart attack, you know? Look at this, look at it. how can I fucking, oh, look at that, it's been sun bleached. Could sell that in a boutique in Joshua Tree City for way too much money. So you got all these little pieces of basalt. They do have some of the vent effect, some of the polishing, by windblown sand grains. Remember, 115 degrees here in the summer. You like that? Huh? You like, you just come out here, you lay naked on the basalt, you know, for an afternoon. All right, come, you know, have someone come pick you up two or three hours later, you're all dehydrated. You got a nice tan. You know, I seen this wino. Uh, he was some wino, he's a white guy, playing guitar in a median strip uh, in Encinitas here. They had the misfortune to be in Encinitas. And, uh, you know, he was he was so tanned. You know, he looked like uh, he looked like he fell asleep in a tanning bed or something. But he was out there just having a jolly old time, asking for money. So, you know, it looked like he uh, came there to surf or do some Hollywood stuff 40 years ago and just got stuck. And you know, the the all the boyish charm maybe drained out. But he was still there doing his thing. Luckily, he wasn't on meth. You never know. Maybe he was. Who knows? Word of the day is vent effect. Vent effect, nice. See that? Nice polishing, right? A few thousand years of just abrasion by sand grains will do you some good. I can't, I, God, I have nightmares about being stuck on a place like this in July. You just, you just cook. You know, even if you got shade, the sun just takes you down. Now, speaking of the kinopodes, here we got a plant called desert holly, no relation to holly. And again, that's another illustration why we shouldn't use common names, they're kind of shit. A triplex hymenolytra, and this one looks pretty bruised. Looks like hell, pretty beat up. You got those betalane pigments in there, those pink pigments, because it is an order caryophyllales. Remember, caryophyllales, all but two families get the betalane pigments instead of the anthocyanins. But both create a, a red pigmentation or, or a variation on a red, maybe a purple, a blue, a pink, whatever. But you can see those leaves, you can see why they call it desert holly, all right? And again, just an incredibly salt-tolerant plant. It increases the, the density of salt within its own tissues to counteract the density of salt in uh, the concentration of salt in the soil so that the soil doesn't pull water out of it. It's a nice way around that, uh, that osmotic differential right, right nice. 
All right, look at that. Look at that beautiful little zit. Just when you loved to have seen it when it was going off. When all this was just a bunch of plasticky molten liquid rack. So you got old comps. You got old members of Asteraceae. Looks like it might be Jurea canescens, okay? Beautiful plant when it's going off. Covered in the wool, like most of the plants out here in the, mo the mojave. You got, uh, what is this, a Corazanth? Oh, yeah, it's a spine flower. Or what's left of them, buckwheat family polygonaceae. But just dry and brittle right now. But really, we're here for the rocks. Okay, we're going to keep moving on. I just wanted to come out here to show you you got a lot nice, a lot of nice hot volcanic action, and it's going to counteract the limestone that we're going to see later. The limestone, of course, being much older. Limestone being a calcareous rock, or a sedimentary rock, originally deposited in an ocean. So these were oceans, I don't know, 250, maybe 300 million years ago, maybe a little bit older. Some places you get 400 million year old limestone in the, in the Mojave. But, uh, you know, you get the, all the volcanics are much, much younger. So let's keep moving on. Okay, they got they got like a little toll booth shack over there, and I talked to the guy in it, and he said you could take as many rocks as you want. He said it's fine. You ever believe that? Some people get mad when you take rocks. Who gives a shit? They're dead. You're not taking plants. Wait, were you gonna you're gonna ruin the enjoyment for the next schmuck that comes by? There's no one out here. And even if there was, they'd be fine. Look at that eight triplex. It's so nice. Same family as that uh, Alan Rolfia I was showing you back there. Both extremely salt tolerant plants. The kinopods, how do they do it? Look at that, so it's 80,000 years. 80,000 years old, this crater is. So 80, if you were here 80,000 years ago, you could see this, uh, you could see this just mass of, of liquid molten racks just flowing right out, okay? So that, that crater's been here longer than the creosote bush has, because the creosote bush came up from South America, you know, the Larea right there, so the, the creosote bush is the colonizer. So the, the, it needs to be called out. We're going to call it out on Twitter. We're going to talk a whole bunch of shit. And maybe it'll just go back to where it came from. There we go. Got creosote. You know, you just see oceans of creosote because it's one of the only plants that can tolerate this heat. And the drought. I mean, you see, it forms little colonies, spreads by the roots. Some of them can live for many thousands of years. But look at it now. Look at it. See? Kind of looks like shit. It's brown. They do turn green after a rain, but right now they're just covered in that wax. Covered in the wax, that thick resin. The same thick resin that makes it smell kind of good. I kind of like the smell. You take a branch, hang it in your shower, all right, when you're in there washing your ass, put it in your, uh, put on your dash, okay? It'll smell nice. It's, you know, you get all the crinkly shit in the vents, all the, all the little bits of leaf material and stuff. It smells, still smells pretty good. But you got quite a few more species in South America, which is where this one came from. There was a dispersal event sometime during the Pleistocene. Okay, last boring, uncharismatic plant for the day, and I'll stop beating you know, over the head with members of the, uh, the Kenopodes. All right, this is a member of the uh, same family we've been talking about, Sueda nigra, this guy here. You got the succulents in there, all right? Lots of salt tolerance going on. And uh, you got some aphids, if you could see them right there. You got some aphids in between those succulent leaves, those juicy succulent leaves. Caryophyllales, of course, is the order. Beta lane pigments, high salt tolerance, and uh, the plant looks half dead. Really easy to not pay attention to, especially when you're driving by it at 70 miles per hour. Look, see the Ellen Rolfia just forms a little colony. All the same plant. I've seen this plant down in the salt flats of Baja California, Sur Mexico, too. Indestructible. Not very charismatic, though. Look, so just a, just a little ways away from Amboy, we got the interface between a limestone and some of that, uh, in some of those intrusives. You can see the large grain size right here. Look at that. Large intrusive racks. Some sort of granite. Oh, yeah, there we go. 11% relative humidity. Air's like a dry sponge. It'll just suck the moisture right out of you. But it's only like 65 degrees. Seen some wonderful speckled rattlesnakes in this canyon before. So look at this dark. This is not a granite. I shouldn't have called it a granite. You just got a large grain size, meaning it cooled slowly underground. So it's an intrusive igneous rock, as opposed to that basalt I was showing you earlier, which is an extrusive igneous rock. But we need to get to the limestone over there. Where's it at? Look at that. Just just a few hundred thousand years of rocks building up at the base of this wash over here, and over here we got. Schatz pygmy cedar, which is not a cedar at all. One of many plants referred to as a cedar, which uh, has no relation to the genus Cedrus. Another good indication not to use common names. This is a member of Asteraceae. 
Got nice, nice yellow disc flowers when it blooms. Forms a nice tree. Virtually indestructible from drought unless it's super dry. And I've seen a couple dead ones up there, but they get about four or five, sometimes six or seven feet tall. Okay, okay, so now he's at the limestone. And down here, we got a rare plant. Looks like shit, shouldn't even be showing it to you. Funeral sage, Salvia funeria. All but dead. Got a couple leaves, but you can still see those adaptations. Very spike-shaped leaves covered in the wool. Adaptations to the Mojave Desert. I don't even know why. Why am I showing you this? You don't want to see this. You don't want to see this stuff. It's hot, it's dry, everything looks like hell. It's like seeing a good friend at his rock bottom, you know? I was at a Spoons restaurant oh. chain in Santa Ana the other day, and I just couldn't help but think how many rock bottoms had been had in that restaurant, you know? You're, you're hanging in this bar that looks like it should be in the set of Scarface. People are doing shitty blow in the bathrooms, contracting STDs. Probably the, the, the gonorrhea cell count of the entire establishment is probably up there in a few billions. It's, it's really embarrassing. Look here on a limestone. You got this fucking buckwheat that no one's bothered to describe yet. Dormant looks like shit. When it's, when it's, after you got some rain though, it's really lit up and it looks good. It's blue. It's got little ketchup and mustard flowers on it. Little pendant ketchup and mustard flowers. And I, again, I don't know why no one's bothered to describe it. How long does it take to write a fucking paper? You collect some material, you describe the habitat, and you describe what it might be related to. You know, I don't know why, you know, someone's dicking around. Look at all that desert lavender down there in a the wash. Look at Condea. Look at that. See that? And some nice intrusive rocks, too. Yeah, see, there's a, there, look at that branching pattern. Look at that net-like branching pattern. You got one barely flowering. God, it's dry as hell here, though. One barely flowering. You can almost see those involucres. Nice over there. Nah, never mind. No, you can't. I'm full of shit. Looks like hell. What a fucking epic plant, though. Somebody describe this. So this thing, you got the photosynthetic stems. They're almost blue. You got a basal rosetta leaves. You can kind of see it on there. See, they're fuzzy as hell. Now, the way I, the time I, the time I first found this was maybe six or seven years ago. Like I said, I was looking for the funeral sage. I didn't really care for buckwheats at the time, but you know, they'd gotten decent rain here. This thing was in full flower. You can see those flowers right there. Tiny little shits. They're fried. Pretty boring. But, uh, but bright ketchup and mustard colors when they're going off. Pendant. You know, you had the blue stems. I was kind of taken aback. I said, what the shit is this? Took some photos, sent it to a friend of mine who studies buckwheats. He didn't know what the shit it was. We sent it to a couple other people. They didn't know what the shit it was. And that's when I found out, you know, someone had collected it. And uh, again, just, you know, it's a, it's a new species. It's basically undescribed. You could see it likes that limestone. Very peculiar texture to this limestone, too. Look at it. You could see it's just all dimpled from reacting with acidic rainwater. How old is that limestone? Two, three, four hundred million years? As you can see, not much else is growing on these barren slopes, except for, uh, you know, you got your encilia, you got your creosote, and then you got that salvia funeria, that funeral sage. Got some little desert ferns too, but they're, they're dormant right now. You got some lichens right there. But, uh, you know, this fucking thing, it only grows in these mountains too. And I believe, if I'm correct, I've seen it growing on volcanics as well. But right here, you can see it's just loving the limestone. You got your intrusives over there. I shouldn't say volcanics. I should say intrusives because they're not volcanics. Vol volcanics would be extrusive. These are very, very obviously intrusive racks. You got a large grain size. You got to come here after a rain. You know, it's pretty boring. Now, you can still look at the rocks. You could have a nice time. You know, go stare at some racks. Go, go, uh, go lick a big slab of limestone. But the plants aren't... Uh, they're not going off. But you got again, you got a bunch of seeds in that in these rocks right here waiting to go off. You got a seed bank. And then the perennials like the salvia funeria, the funeral sage, and that buckwheat I was just showing you uh, are perennials, so they'll come back once I get some rain too. Look at this. See the dark rocks? You got the point of contact between the uh, the younger magmas, the younger intrusive magmas. Oh, look at that lichen. That's a nice one. The younger intrusive magmas and the limestone up there that point of contact is what gets all the miners horny that and uh that and whiskey and donkeys see look you get the green you get these green minerals everywhere is it olivine peroxine what's going on with that right on the limestone right on a point of contact nice you like traipsing up hot dry desert mountains in the spring look you see look you got myriopterus right there all dried Dried and dormant, waiting for a rain. 
Nice member of the Teradaceae. Nice desert fern. There's another one. Look, fuzzy, fuzzy blue ferns. Here's the big horn sheep shit. So they've been hanging out here too. Got a nice, look at it. You got a nice example of a solid chunk of limestone. Probably, I don't know, a quarter mile long. Interspersed with the, uh, the intrusives. See, there you go. There's a nice, nice illustration of grain size. You can see them all weathering out of this intrusive igneous rock. So you got a large grain size. You got intrusive igneous rock. I said it five times. Five times in the last week alone. You can see this stuff. Oh, look, it just sounds like silica. It just sounds like little glass beads. A lot of nice texture here. See, and that's what it looks like sometimes when it's smooth, you know? When it hasn't uh, weathered throughout. Well, you got some of that up there, too. See that? The large grain size on the intrusive eggs. Huh? Prick. Majestic mountains. Look at those. Look at how majestic those mountains are. They're so majestic. This is God's country, I tell you. Did God make those? Mmm. God made it for us. It's so beautiful and kind of him. So I keep mentioning the geology because sometimes you get plants. I mean, in this case, you get a lot of plants that occur on the limestone, but not on the volcano, the, uh, the igneous, uh, the intrusive igneous. So you get a different, uh, look at that. There's the interface right there. Get your intrusive igneous, and then you got your limestone. So, but then you get some plants that can tolerate both, like in Celia farinosa. Look at that, it looks like a tree down there. It's just a massive creosote. Same thing up there. Oh, look, you could see, you could see a little cotton top cactus. See that pink up there? Could be a feral cactus too, but it's probably a echinocactus a polycephalus. Not in the genus Homolocephala. Goofy fucking name. Look, there's a little cave up there too. Might be nice to go out there, you know? You get the big horns up there maybe. You know, sipping on cocktails. All right, let's go. Look at this Ariagonum inflatum. Everything looks like shit though. Ariagonum inflatum, buckwheat family, same genus as that uh, unidentified plant I was showing. Oh, there it is. Is that unidentified plant right there? Not unidentified. Just unnamed, undescribed. And apparently it only grows on limestone. But so I wanna know how did the intrusives get mixed in there with the limestone? Was it a dike? Huh? Was it an intrusion? Look, see that up there? Looks like some sort of, uh, you know, a tainted strawberry shortcake or something. You got the limestone mixed in there with those uh, darker intrusive igneous. How'd they do that? So the question we gotta ask now, seeing that little island of limestone surrounded by the igneous, by the intrusive igneous, is why do some plants, especially in deserts, only grow on a certain rock type, like on the limestone? You get the same thing with gypsum too, okay? It could be that there's a, you know, they can outcompete plants that aren't adapted to it, but still, even if uh, there's plants that that aren't adapted to the limestone. That would mean that they're adapted to some other kind of soil. So there's something going on with the rock, the rye, with the soil, which isn't really soil. You can't really call it that. It's more just little bits of rock. Derived from those, those rocks from the limestone or from the igneous, there's something going on mineralogically or probably in terms of pH that affects, uh, quite likely affects the roots of the plants that grow in there. So like that, you know, that little thing, you'll get that funeral stage growing there, but you won't get it growing up there or over there. Or over there well maybe over there where you get a little bit more limestone but so is it a is it a is it a they're able to out compete type of thing like you see with serpentine soils or is it uh they need the limestone like if the seeds germinate on a volcanics or on uh, the intrusive igneous the limestone loving plant seeds won't uh won't thrive they'll germinate and then they just die i don't know we'll have to we'll have to look into that i've looked for papers on that before but i didn't find too many an iron concretion in the limestone nice looks like a turd pretty heavy too got a different texture and a different uh, density and weight than all that uh, stuff over there god damn that's some fucked up limestone too look at it oh it's like limey sand but it's the way it's weathering reacting with that uh that rainwater what the shit so hopefully you learned a little bit more about how geology and plant life interact. You know, it's most obvious in deserts where you don't really have any soil. It makes it a lot more apparent. Anyway, that's all I got for you today. Have a good rest of the evening. Go fuck yourself. Bye.